everyone. Welcome back. Josh Bito here flying solo today, joined alongside one of the smartest minds in all of MMA, one of our favorite people to chat with, the great coach, Brandon Gibson. Mate, it's always a pleasure and an honor to get your time. Uh, thank you very much for it today and welcome. Um, first things first, how was uh, how has your day been so far? Oh man, my day has been excellent. It's a beautiful summer day, a little, a little hot here in the desert, but uh, life is good. Awesome, man. That's good to hear. Well, first thing I want to touch on is obviously John's talked a little bit recently about, you know, potentially returning at MSG this year, um, which would be fitting considering, you know, the the events of last year and to return this year would be great. One thing I wanted to know was how is John's recovery coming along? Obviously, uh, the, the tour and pectoral has been eight months now, or eight or nine months. I just wanted to know how far he is away from uh, being ready and, and, and full strength training. Well, I feel like this fall is going to be a great timeline for him to compete. Um, we all love the idea of Madison Square Garden and being in New York City. Um, so that that's the goal we are working towards. And John's recovery is coming along just inc incredibly well. During his uh, time while he was recovering from his, his injury, you know, John continues to push himself mentally, spiritually, physically in all areas. And, uh, and now we're starting to see um, – you know, just the rewards of all of that work he put in during the injury time. Hmm. So a lot of new tools to play with. Um, his mind's sharper than ever, and his strength is really coming along. So I'm looking forward to a fall return. We've kept our our wild motley crew together, and uh, we've all just continued to evolve, grow, train, push each other. Hmm. So I really like the course we're on, and I, I look forward to the fight. Awesome, man. Well, well, look, one thing I wanted to bring up, um, you know, obviously he's got the fight with, with Stipe, that is inevitable, and uh, that is one he won't be look, overlooking, I can imagine, in the way he's talked about it, he's very, um, he's not overlooking that fight one single iota, but he has talked about on Twitter, you know, the, the thoughts of Alex Pereira and being potentially being a more interesting and exciting fight instead of Tom Aspinall, and in all honesty, I as soon as he brought up Alex Pereira, it got me excited because I I am a big fan of Alex and what he does and 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 then the excitement he's brought to to mixed martial arts, um, just being how lethal of a striker he is and his his whole personality and how it's developed and and all those sorts of things. And I just wanted to know your opinion. Obviously, from a meritocracy standpoint, Tom, everyone is claiming that Tom is next if if John sticks around. In your opinion, though, he gets through steep, eh? What is the more intriguing fight, John Jones and, and Aspinall or, or, or Alex Pereira? I, I think there's a lot of intriguing options out there. And, and we got to see how Tom Aspinall's next fight goes. Mm. You know, Curtis Blades is also dynamic. He could be right in that mix. Um, Alex has a big fight this weekend. Mm. Um, I, I could see his, his buzz and his aura and his legend continue to grow. And that may become a very big fight when the time comes. Um, and of course, Aspinall, um, who, who has proven to be a great contender and a great interim champion so far. Um, I, I think John, being John, being one of the greats of the sport, mm. there's always going to be intriguing matchups. Everybody's going to want to see him against different styles, different dynamics, different storylines, different uh, rivalries. So, you know, I, from 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 my position right now, we're super focused on Steve A because that is the the task in front of us. And you know, let's see how this shakes out. If he has a performance like he did against Cyril Gone, man, I can see us turning around real quick and getting right back to work. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, we'll we'll see how the chips fall in kind of some of the other areas. Uh, one of my good friends the other night we were we were talking and he said, you know, when you're at the top, sometimes you have to be patient and just see how the chips fall. Mm -hmm. And that really helps to clarify the the path for somebody to try to get to us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we'll see how things shake out. What's up guys, it's, uh, it's Josh here from The Stand. And look, I know you're in the middle uh, of a good little interview that we're currently doing, but I wanna take a second of your time just to give a quick little shout out to today's sponsor, uh, TrainAid, obviously they're, uh, they're big supporters of us, like we are um, of them. And today they're, uh, they're sponsoring this video. Um, and look, I wanna, I wanna let you guys know about a little product they do, their, their premium product, TrainAid Hydration. Um, it's the best hydration formula on the market, guys. I'm not gonna, not gonna lie to you. And look, if you don't believe me, ask guys like Israel Adesanya, Alexander Volkanovsky, Leon Edwards. You ever heard of these guys? I mean, they're the top athletes in the world. Uh, and they're all taking train out hydration. Um, it really is the number one formula um, in the world for hydration. And in, in the summer months here in Australia, I mean, it's something that uh, I think everyone should be taking. Um, and Trainout have, uh, have been very nice uh, to give us a discount code, a very healthy di discount code as well. I mean, it's a nice little discount code. If you use the code FTS15, 
at the checkout, um, they will give you 15% off. Um, we'll leave a link um, to their website in, in this uh, description of this video. And uh, yeah, check in out, guys. Please support them uh, because they are supporting us. Cheers. Definitely. Well, look, Aspinall is back in action next month, uh, late next month at the UC 304 against Curtis Blades. Um, and, I, I, you know, it's his first interim title defense since Hannon Barrow. So it's been a long time since someone's defended the interim title. Um, and I just wanted to know your thoughts on that fight um, as we're about a month out. You know, the, the first matchup, I actually thought Curtis Blades was getting the best of Tom before the injury. Um, you know, they, Tom brings speed and combinations and quick hands and uh, incredible submission skills to the fight. And Curtis brings just that explosiveness, that tenacity, um, that that wrestling pressure and pace. They're both big men. Um, you know, that's one of those fights, all fights at heavyweight, like don't mm -hmm. blink or it could be mm -hmm. over. Um, but I could really see they, they both have so many ways to win. They mm -hmm. both have so many paths to victory. Um, for, from from my position, I I think I think Curtis Blades can get it done. I think he can really take Tom into some deep waters and start grinding him. So that's my early fight prediction. We'll, we'll see how it goes. See if I'm mm. wrong. Because do you think? And this is what I sort of what my thinking is leaning towards is that if Aspinall does win this fight, I feel like he needs to make a statement win. If he just grinds out a decision um, against Curtis, I. Don't know how much that's going to intrigue John. Obviously, you know you you want to go out there and put a dominant performance on to to keep luring him back in and say, look, I'm still here. Look what I'm doing. If he were to go out, however, and, and sort of grind out a a close split decision, something like that, I, I don't know how good that would be for his case. I just want to know if you agree with that, and and what would you think? You know, if he I, needs a bit of a statement win, I do agree with that. I think. John Jones is much like Conor McGregor. I think the fans want to see, you know, these legends and in intriguing fights. Mm. Um, and and maybe that intriguing fight is Tom Aspinall. Maybe if Alex Puella goes out there and just puts on the fireworks, and Tom Aspinall has a, a boring, grind out five rounds fight, that may really dictate what the people want to see. You know, I John's looking for big fights. That's what he's looking for at this point in his career. He's beaten all the great champs. You know, his resume is is incredible. It's hard to compare anybody to him. So, you know, if he has one fight or two fights left, I think he wants those matchups that, you know, like that fire in him. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Um, I wanted to touch on Aaron Pico. Obviously, he had a great win over Henry Corrales, one of the great guys in uh, in the PFL, at, back at the PFL versus Bellator event um, in April. Um, where is he at at the moment? I know I think a title shot for him is very well deserved. Um, obviously, one of the best in the world on a great little win streak now. Um, is there anything you know about what sort of next with um, with Aaron Pico? Well, Pico's been doing the work. Um, you know, you take away the the injury he had in against Jeremy Kennedy, Mm -hmm. um, which we got repaired and which is feeling like a million times better since then. Um, with that, you know, little slight blemish, he has been on an absolute tear and and not only a tear, like he finishes all of his opponents. Mm -hmm. Um, I think he's become a fan favorite. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, we just took out Pedro Cavallo and then Henry Corrales. Mm -hmm. Aaron's doing everything he can to fight for the title. And, you know, after Pitbull fought Jeremy Kennedy, Pitbull grabbed the mic and said, Pico, you're next. That's what we've been working towards. Mm -hmm. um, we're trying to, you know, we went out to PFL last week to try to have a little chat and see what that plan is. Um, no, no news as of yet, but we're just training hard and we're training for a five round fight right now. And we're training for Pitbull. Mm -hmm. So I can't, I can't wait whether it's September or December or down the road. I, I think Aaron's going to go out there and put a world class performance on one of the greats at 145 and in Patricio Pitbull. Mm, absolutely. And obviously, I know I saw your Instagram last week that you were at the uh, the Bellator event in Dublin. Um, and I just want to was that not in Dublin? It was, but we were at PFL in Salt Lake City. Ah, and then Bellator right. Dublin was the See, next. And night. this this is my question: Is how, what have you made of this PFL and Bellator hybrid? Because 
to me, it, it can get confusing at times where you've got two different products, same product, but it's yeah, it, it can be all over the shop at times, which is where my brain goes. I remember the PF, the, the Bellator event last weekend. I forgot there was a PFL event though the, the night before or something like that. Um, and I just wanted to know what you've made of this this hybrid and, and how you see it sort of going. You know, I think it's cool to see um some of the matchups that can be made um mm. like last week we were at salt lake city and to see clay collar the pfl guy fight former bellator fighter mads Brunel in the tournament like that was a great matchup um there's a lot of those intriguing matchups i think bellator is a great brand especially in europe um i've, I've seen sold out houses there and you know the tournament format for some fighters is incredible depending on your skill set for others they're not tournament fighters you know they may be big big fight fighters so yeah and i also did love you know when we were in um riyadh the champ versus champ card you know to have some super champs i think that was a great event so um but i agree it could be a little confusing at times and yeah. I, I think they still need some work to do they, they got some hopefully some plans to clarify i think pico fighting for the title is one of those ones i want to see yeah. bellator and pfl figure out soon yeah, definitely. Um, and I know I saw your post on Impa Kasanga and I, obviously he's had one of the great resurgence in MMA, maybe one of the greatest stories, you know, coming from where he was in the UFC to being cut and then living in his car to now winning that million and, and being in a position to potentially do it again this year. Um, I just wanted to know if you had any thoughts on, on sort of his journey and, and how far he's come over the last two or three years. I'm just uh, man, I'm a fan, you know, I, I've, I'm always going to be a fan of the sport and fan of fighters. And uh, we met Impa in Saudi Arabia and just like, just a world-class dude. Mm. I love his fighting style. You know, his, his fight in Salt Lake on Saturday, I was fortunate to get to watch it live and, and be front row. And I just love his resiliency, his grit, his determination, his belief, his faith that he shows. Um, so I'm, I'm just a fan and I like, you know, sharing flowers when when flowers are due so yeah absolutely well one last one from me uh six gun i'll let you go um obviously you know you're one of the greatest striking coaches um that has ever walked the face of the earth i truly believe that but do you you know obviously there's some you know newer um aspects of com uh, combat sports coming through com karate combat bare knuckle is, is is one as well are you following any of those emerging combat sports and, and taking any aspects from, from the striking in those sports or is it too different from MMA to sort of emulate and any of those aspects um, of their striking and, and putting it forth in your coaching? We're always looking for spots of inspiration. I, th I think bare knuckle is a little, probably the one that's further away mm. from MMA in some ways, but you know, from, from the footwork dynamic to defense, to feints, to setups, um, I'm always looking at different striking um, influences. So I mean, I've seen a lot of great stuff in karate combat. Um, I've seen, you know, some some great defense and grit and counters and bare knuckle. I'm a, I'm a student of the games. Uh, mm -hmm. John and I were actually sharing some like 1980s K1 instructionals <laughs> the other day. Just because there's so much to learn in this game. There's so much mm -hmm. to master. Um, and you know, some, some things go in, in cycles and what's old may become new again. Yeah. Um, so we're always looking for some inspiration that can maybe catch an opponent off guard or um, things that we need to be aware of defensively as the game continues to change and grow. So Absolutely. Yeah, and I'm a student. I'm a student of the game. That's why you're one of the best, man. Um, look, Brandon, always a pleasure, man. We always really value your time. Um, yeah, we always really value you coming on and giving us some uh, insight. It means a lot to us. Um, look, man, we're looking forward to John's return. I know I can't wait to see what you guys put forth. Like, like I, uh, I'm, I'm expecting a really big thing from John. I think he is, uh, yeah, on a, on a path right now, which I don't think anyone can touch. And uh, I know you're a part of it. And I really look forward to seeing you guys, what you guys can do, and and put forth that effort. So, man, it's always a pleasure. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, guys. Appreciate it, man.